All right, I want to talk a little bit about the ESP8266, which is a small Wi-Fi chip you can get actually very cheaply online different places. I actually got this really cool uh, link sprite, link node, one relay, ESP8266, which is a Wi-Fi controlled chip with GPIO and a voltage regulator and a relay on this for $11 at Micro Center. So for 11 bucks, it's pretty got, much got everything I want in most of my projects. Uh, wireless connectivity, digital I.O., uh, an amazing community that does interesting stuff. You can use the platform I.O. or you can use Arduino, which, uh, IDE, which is what I use to do this. Um, and it's a pretty cool thing. This one's 5 volt powered. They also make one that's uh, 6 to 24 volt powered that's in the Arduino farm set. It's a 3.3 volt chipset, so make sure all your peripherals are 3.3 volts. But you probably already knew that if you're looking at this. So what did I do? I wanted to create a um, web controlled relay. Duh, that's what everybody does, right? I didn't want to do the um, Alexa integration, but I wanted to make it where I could post to a web server, or maybe this thing would go out to a cloud service somewhere, but post to a web server and turn a relay on enough. So it turned out that wasn't too bad. The other thing I wanted to be able to do here, if we look at this, um, I, I kind of wrote this program for this uh, cribbing code from a bunch of other places and making use of some really cool libraries. Um, basically what the program I ended up writing does, so the system has a built-in web server. It has a soft access point. So if you turn it on and there's no network it knows about nearby, it'll actually bring up an access point, ask you what network you want to connect to, and you enter a password and it'll, do, and it'll log you in. It won't do uh, WPA2 Enterprise, but it'll do uh, WPA2 Home or whatever it's called. So it'll work on most home networks and a lot of companies. But if you have a lockdown enterprise, it doesn't work. So it's just something to be aware of. So there's a built-in web server. We're running Bonjour style uh, dynamic DNS, or uh, and that lets you this machine show up in DNS for machines. So as long as you're running Bonjour services, uh, this will the node will come up with a unique node name with the code I wrote, um, and it'll let you uh, see that if, just with a web name, so you don't have to know the IP address for it. Um, what else have I got? Oh, it's got a form base entry, which you can kind of see here, uh, that lets you uh, turn the relay on and off through a form submission, or you can do direct get calls. God, no Rastafarians come after me on this. Um, basically, it lets you turn the relay on and off with a direct get call, so you can click either of these hyperlinks to turn this on and off. Uh, let me see if I can do this here. So we got this one right here. Can you see that? I think so. So and you'll be able to hear it. Basically, I can turn the relay on. Oh, that's actually not the web page. That was the, uh, so we'll come over here to this one. Turn the relay on. You probably can see a light flash. And I don't know if you can hear it click. But you can see the relay lights changing the status over here so you can see what it's doing, right? All right, so that's actually a snapshot here, a screenshot of that. Um, and then each device with the software actually has a unique address. It'll be ESP28. 8266 dash whatever the MAC address hash uh, hash value for the MAC address is. So that lets you bring up a bunch of these with the same software and they'll all have their own unique addresses. The other thing, um, let me think what else has this got? It's got, oh, huh. so I hadn't actually done any work with this before with over the air programming. Usually I'll do like, uh, you know, your favorite serial connection where you plug it into the serial port and you write code to it. I'm gonna plug this in right now so I can show a couple of things. Um, and then when you bring it up in the IDE, you'll download it that way. Um, in my case, I actually wanted to be able to do over-the-air programming so I don't have to have it plugged into my laptop. So there's actually two different ways you can do that with this piece of software. You can actually click on a link. I can show you here. You can click on a link right here, and you can update the firmware via web page. It'll ask you for a username and password. It's documented in the code what it is. It's different for each device. Um, and then you can upload the binary from the from the build process from the Arduino software. Or you can just do run a Python script or do it in the IDE where it'll directly load through an open admin port on the device and you can upload firmware to that. I'm gonna actually show you how that works real quick. So let's go here. This is a little out of order, but so basically here if I, you can see right here that I've got some software. If I build this software, so I'm just gonna build it up real quick. So I've already built this once on here and turned off the antivirus for the build directory. So it's really freaking fast. It's a lot faster than it used to be. Um, and also it doesn't rebuild the libraries every time. It'll only rebuild it'll build them once. Boom. So it's linking everything together now. 
Uh, this is about 300K worth of binary. And now if I um, wanna go do over the air upload for this, normally you can come in here and do this right here. You can say add, pick a COM port and it'll pick a network port. I have never been able to get that to work on either my Windows 10 box or my Mac. Something I'm obviously missed a step, I need to read the manual. Um, but instead I'm just gonna show you here that um, you can actually do this, uh, can I make that bigger? Nope. So uh, you probably can't see it. Let me see, can I make that bigger? No, I don't remember how to do that on here. Okay, so basically it's a Python script. The examples are on the GitHub page for this. Basically you run the Python tools that are already installed with the IDE. You tell it the name of the, the DNS name, which will be the local kind of Bonjour style name. We tell it the password. Oh, now you know the password to this machine. And then we tell it what binary was built when we looked over here, if we looked at the built core, blah, blah, blah here, if we scroll out to the end, we can see what directory and what file was built. It's always the name of the ino.bin and then this build directory changes based on the session. So I'm gonna upload this to the device here. And um, let's see, I think I wanna do something else here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the COM port up at the same time and I'll bring it back in a minute. So this is actually, I'm hooked up to the console, which you really don't need once you have over the under, over the air programming working. I'm just gonna hit the return key here. And it's first gonna go out and authenticate to the device over the OTA port. And now it's doing the upload. This is like twice as fast as doing it over the serial. So if you're doing development, it's amazing. The only thing is your code's gotta be less than, uh, and you can see here the device is now resetting. So it started the OTA, it recorded it as it went. The device will reset. Now it's gonna come up looking for the Wi-Fi. It'll find the network that I've already connected to here and it'll use the saved password. It'll start up the DNS responder and then it brings up the um, it brings up the web endpoint, which you can either get to directly or by the DNS, which is written in my case, you'll see it on the software, it describes how to find that. It turns out the relay form is on the slash for that. We actually added a get URL for relay off and a get URL for relay on, so you can go directly against those. That's what I was demoing before. The web enabled form um, here, it actually logs out to the console what the password and the admin username is. Uh, if you wanna do form based and it uses the same password for OTA. So if you'd use the Python script or any kind of OTA script, we'll use the same as we do for the web page. Um, that was just simplicity. You obviously the code's on GitHub, right? So if you come over here to GitHub and I'll put it up in the video, um, basically what I've got is uh, the simple program and a description of the architecture, right? So we hadn't really talked about it, but the software that goes in with this is, comes with the basic libraries that a lot of things get built onto the ESP8266 for. The network, I actually added the DNS, we added the hardware drivers, um, we added a, the web access point, right? The Wi-Fi manager was what that's called. There's the web server got enabled. It's pretty slick. You can add in different kinds of URLs with different kinds of handlers against it and you can require authentication on some of the endpoints. Um, and then there's the kind of the firmware update core that got loaded for the library. There's the OTA entry point, which is the web um, the port, port direct upload that's supported by the IDE or the Python script I showed. There's also an update module, an update page that can get added to the web server with security. So you can pick, like in my case, it's slash update and that'll let you do the form upload. You can actually, I'll show you that in a minute if I haven't shown you before. So I can go here, I can click uh, reset the device, update the firmware from the web page and I can do admin and two, two, five, three, one. What just happened? Oh, this might be a horrible demo after all. And then two, two, five, three, eight. There we go. That's the form. Now you can choose a file. We would pick the same bin file we picked before. We'd hit update. The device will reset and we're good to go. The only other thing I wanted to show you here, there were a couple other minor features. You can reset, restart the device. So if you didn't, you know, for some reason, you can also reset the Wi-Fi and restart the portal. That'll erase all the passwords. You'll come back up, it'll come up in soft AP mode and you can try a different username and password. Sometimes that's useful if you get your device gets confused or you wanna demo the AP or you wanna use a different password. I don't know why you would do that. It's great in development because if you wanna play with, make sure the Wi-Fi manager is still working and lets you do a test with the, uh, the implemented version. Um, so if we come back to this here, those are, and then there's a form for the relay, which you see here. So these basically, these two run on top of the web service and are driven 
in directly into some of the event handler part of that. And then the OTA sits on and the update server sit on the firmware update piece, right? So there's a whole bunch of other documentation in here on how it works and what you can do with it. I think this is really cool. It's totally worth, and this software should work with any device that has an ESP8266 in it. The only two things that are hard coded in here for the whole app. So you can actually build this app and turn off OTA. If you were to um, undef this HTTP update or undef the OTA update, it would actually um, just turn off those two features. So if you're worried about security for that and you actually want to burn the software with it and to save some space for something else, you can do that. The only two pins that are specific to this device are the relay pin, because relay GPIO 16 is where the relay is, and GPIO 2 is where the LED pin is. All the ESP8266 after a certain date, I might have pulled this up here, I think you can see it, the blue blinking light, that's actually GPIO 2, so this software, um, every 20,000 loops or 200,000 loops, I can't remember, we can look in the code, it'll flash the light to show you the system is running. Uh, you can kind of use that light for anything you want, I guess you could light pipe it to a case, uh, but basically there's only two LEDs on here, um, one of them, if I can go here, one of them is on the relay, Hook up. So if I click this, you can see that the green light in the corner comes on and then it goes back off. And there's a power LED and then there's GPIO too. So really on this device, and then there's like six other GPIO pins and an ADC you can use here. Totally cool for 11 bucks. I hope this gets you excited to use this and try the firmware out at the URL on the page and uh, send me feedback if you like it or just use it and don't send me feedback.